It has been a while since I made a recording. I've been out doing a little traveling to visit family. While I was away, the first few positive cases of coronavirus were diagnosed in South Africa. What has happened since is quite sobering to say the least. We've all been bombarded with information about using hand sanitizers, masks, and trying to avoid places where there are crowds of people, etc. I'm not going to rehash any of that information. What I do want to talk to you about is the potential consequences of the spread of the coronavirus here in South Africa, as well as internationally and how it all comes together to affect us all. Anyone who has followed the progression of the coronavirus from when it started in China late last year will know that China has all but come to a standstill. The population has basically been placed into quarantine and are not able to go to work, mostly. The economy in China has all but come to a halt. China has an economy based on production. In other words, they make things. Products that get used by people all over the world. These people are now not able to produce these products and China is losing a large portion of its income. A similar thing is happening in South Africa, as well as the UK and some parts of Europe, as well as the US right now. It has now also started happening in South Africa, although the spread of the virus has only just started here. The South African population is in general far more ignorant than the population elsewhere in the world, and for that reason, the reaction we are seeing here is a lot more extreme. It is common knowledge that when you have no knowledge of something, the first and most natural reaction is to fear it. So let me get to the real reason for this recording. Those of you who have been following my channel for a while will remember a video I uploaded on March the 25th last year, that was 2019, titled, How Far Do You Think We Are? From Total Chaos and Anarchy in South Africa. In that video, I sketched out a scenario where ESCOM fails and how long thereafter the country takes to fall into total chaos. In the video, everything starts with ESCOM failing and the whole country being plunged into darkness due to the incompetence of the people running ESCOM. This threat still exists. Nothing has changed there. However, another contributing factor has been thrown into the mix, the coronavirus pandemic. It is only a matter of time before the virus takes a proper hold and people start to fall ill by the thousands. We have all seen what is happening in Italy right now, and they have one of the best health systems in the world. We have one of the worst. I'm not going to get into details of how or why the outbreak in South Africa is not going to be anything like the experience we have seen in the rest of the world. I will go so far as to say that with the population densities we have here in the squatter camps and informal settlements in South Africa is second to none. Combine that with almost total ignorance and you have a recipe for disaster that I think will boggle the minds of the ordinary person. We have already seen how people have reacted to the situation and I doubt there has even been a hundred confirmed cases here yet. Yesterday I was in Checkers and the people were going absolutely crazy. I saw families pushing shopping carts that were heaped to the point where they couldn't put anything more on them. Some families had more than one trolley packed like this. The crazy thing is that most of these people are paying for the stuff with credit or putting it on credit. So most people who can afford it, and many who can't, have stocked up with as much as they can afford to. I've been able to put away enough food and water to last us about probably two months at a stretch. Unfortunately, I think that this coronavirus is going to be with us for far longer than two or three months. In my opinion, we are looking at 12 months, possibly a lot longer. So we get to the reason for this recording. What happens with those people who have not been able to stock up with food, whether it be for financial or other reasons. There are going to be an increasing number of people who are infected with the coronavirus who don't have food to eat, and also people who are not infected who won't have food to eat. Do you really think these people are going to sit down and wait to die of starvation or die of, of infection from the virus? Not in a million years. What we are going to find going forward as this pandemic progresses is that Farm attacks and murders are going to increase. Stock theft is going to become a huge problem. The motivation of these crimes is going to change though. It is going to become starvation. A hungry person will do anything for food. In my opinion, we are going to see the formation of groups of raiders 
who are going to be heading out in search of food to steal. At first it will be the shops, supermarkets that get raided and looted. But at some point there will be no more shops and supermarkets left to raid. Where do you think they are going to go then to find food? As people start to run out of food and hunger sets in, the food you have stored is going to become too much of a temptation for them and suddenly we are going to have raids into the suburbs. Basically the same scenario is in my previous video, just with a different cause, hunger, due to no food being available anywhere. One other thing you need to take into consideration is ESCOM. Just as in my previous video where ESCOM goes down through collapse of the system, this time it is due to nobody being at the helm. If things get so bad in South Africa with the virus, healthy people are going to refuse to go to work in places such as ESCOM. It will simply be left to run by itself until something breaks. After that, it will be a knock-on effect and the result will be the same, a total shutdown. Add all these factors together and you have a situation where the odds just keep getting stacked higher and higher against us. I urge my viewers to go and watch and or listen to the video I made on in March last year because the end result here with the coronavirus running rampant in the country could have the exact same effect or result. So what can we do to prepare ourselves for this and to attempt to prevent it? Once again, I urge everyone to join or form neighborhood watches. Join a civil defense organization. Arm yourself. It is still possible for anyone to get a license to possess a firearm if you do not have a criminal record. Get training and practice regularly with your firearm. You will be amazed at how badly you will shoot after an extended period of not practicing. Trust me, I know. Ammunition is not cheap and I would like to practice far more than I do. But I do what I can. If you own a handgun, Carry it on your person at all times. Anyone who knows me will tell you that if my firearm is not permitted, I don't go there. That means I carry it to the bank. I carry it to sports events at school. I carry it everywhere I go. I even have it next to me at night while watching something on TV, which is not very often, but I do now and again. I will do everything within my ability and means not to be a victim. Now I would like to cover another threat to us the white minorities. It has come to light that there are some individuals on social media, black individuals, who are publicly telling their fellow blacks that if they should get infected with a virus, they should immediately go out and find places where lots of white people gather and do whatever they can to infect those white people. Take a look at this post. I mean, how sick can a person get? This is not an isolated case either. I've heard of others too. They give reasons like the whites are the only ones who can afford to stock up on food. The whites brought this disease to South Africa, etc, etc. And then there is the oldest and most destructive problem of all. Ignorance. Take a look at this video. I'm sure this woman has absolutely no idea what she is doing. To her, she is just doing a job. Now take note. The cupcakes or muffins she is putting into these cups are already baked. They will not be sterilized in a baking process. If she has the virus, or gets the virus and does this again, it is going straight from her mouth to yours. The scary thing is, she is oblivious to what she is doing. At least, I'd like to think she is. Another example of total ignorance I was told about yesterday by a friend of mine who actually witnessed someone in a shopping center wearing a mask. This person removed the mask to wipe their runny nose with one of their hands and then put the mask back on. If that is not total ignorance, I don't know what is. We have seen too many examples of pizzas being spat on, coffee being spat in and things like this to take the chances any longer. It is time we started to form our own in-house takeaways and restaurants where we are assured that our food has not been tampered with in any way and that the money that is exchanged stays among us, our people. It is simple to stop filling the pockets of large franchises and support our people. For those interested, I am in the process of organizing an interview with Hein Marx of the ULA, or Fear Fear R as it is known in Afrikaans. I have a few questions that I would like to put to him that I have not heard answers to in the many interviews that he has given that I have watched. It will not be screened live. Stay tuned for that. It should clear a few things up. 
Please like and share this video on as many social media platforms as possible. It is the only way that my message gets out there. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, do it now by clicking on the red subscribe button below and to the right of this video. While you are there, click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button to get notified every time I upload new content. If you feel you have received some kind of value and would consider supporting my channel, in the description field of this video I have provided ways for both local as well as international subscribers to make a contribution. If you would like to make a crypto contribution, I have also provided a Bitcoin as well as a Litecoin wallet address. If you would like to contribute any other cryptocurrency, simply shoot me an email to the address also provided in the description field and I will supply a, the relevant wallet address to you. To all those amazing people who do support me, I would like to say thank you very much. You have no idea how far your contribution goes. Be safe out there. Remember to wash and sanitize your hands after handling or touching anything which you might doubt its sanitary status, such as shopping trolleys, elevator buttons and stairway handrails. Until next time.